in terms of the structure of the brain, again, this may be going into speculation land. I hope you go along with me. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Is, uh, okay, so the brain seems to be intelligent and our AI systems aren't very currently. So where do you think intelligence arises in the brain? Like what, what is it about the brain? Like so if you mean where location wise, it's no single spot. It would be equivalent to asking, I'm looking at New York City, where is the economy? The answer is you can't point to anywhere. The economy is all about the interaction of all of the pieces and parts of the city. And that's what, you know, intelligence, whatever we mean by that in the brain is interacting from everything going on at once. In terms of a structure, so we look, humans are much smarter than fish. Maybe not dolphins, but dolphins are mammals, right? But I assert that what we mean by smarter has to do with live wiring. So, so what we mean right. when we say, oh, we're smarter is, oh, we can figure out a new thing and figure out a new pathway to get where we need to go. And that's because fish are essentially coming to the table with, you know, okay, here's the hardware, go, swim, mate, eat. But we have the capacity to say, okay, look, I'm going to absorb, oh, oh, but, you know, I saw someone else do this thing and, and I re read once that you could do this other thing and so on. So do you think there's, is there something, I know th 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 these are mysteries, but like architecturally speaking, what feature of the brain of, uh, of the live wire aspect of it that is really useful for intelligence? So like, is it the ability of neurons to reconnect? Like, is there something, is there any lessons about the human brain you think might be inspiring for us in, to take into the artificial, into the machine learning world. Yeah. I'm actually just trying to write some up on this now called, you know, if you want to build a robot, start with the stomach. And what I mean by that, what I mean by that is huh? a robot has to care. It has to have hunger. It has to care about surviving huh? that kind of thing. Here's an example. So the penultimate chapter of my book, um, I titled the, the wolf in the Mars Rover. And I, I just look at this simple comparison of you look at a wolf, it gets its leg caught in a trap. What does it do? It gnaws its leg off, and then it figures out how to walk on three legs. No problem. Now, the Mars rover, Curiosity, got its front wheel stuck in some Martian soil, and it died. This project cut, that cost billions of dollars died because it got its wheels. So wouldn't it be terrific if we could build a robot that chewed off its front wheel and figured out how to operate with a slightly different body plan? That's the kind of thing that we want to be able to build and to get there, what we need, the whole reason the wolf is able to do that is because its motor and somatosensory systems are live wired. So it says, oh, you know what? Turns out I've got a body plan that's different than what I thought a few minutes ago, but I, ha I have a yen to survive and I care about relevance, which in this case is getting to food, getting back to my pack and so on. So I'm just going to figure out how to operate with this. Oh, whoops, that didn't work. Oh, oh okay. I'm kind of getting it to work. But the Mars rover doesn't do that. It just says, oh, geez, I was pre-programmed to have four wheels, now I have three, I'm screwed. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know if you're familiar with a philosopher named Ernest Becker. He wrote a book called Denial of Death. And there's a few psychologists, Sheldon Salmon, I think he, I just spoke with him on his podcast, mm -hmm. um, who developed uh, terror management theory, which is, uh, like Ernest Becker is a philosopher that basically said that uh, uh, mortality, fear of mortality is at the core of it. And so I, I don't know if it sounds compelling as an idea that we're all, I mean, that all of the civilization we've constructed is based on this, but it's... I'm familiar it, with his work. I, here's what I think. I think that, yes, fundamentally, the, the, this desire to survive is at the core of it. I would agree with that. But, but how that expresses itself in your life ends up being very different. The reason you do what you do is, I mean, you could list the, the hundred reasons why you chose to write your tweet this way and that way. And it really has nothing to do with the survival part. It has to do with, you know, trying to impress fellow humans and surprise them and say something. Yeah, so many things built on top of each other. Yeah, but exactly. it's, it's fascinating to think that in artificial intelligence systems, we want to be able to somehow engineer this drive for survival, for immortality. I mean, because as humans, we're not just about survival. We're aware of the fact that we're going to die which is a very kind of, we're aware like Most space time. Most people aren't, by the way. Aren't? Aren't. Con Confucius said, uh, he said, each person has two lives. The second one begins when you realize that you have just one. 
Yeah. But but most people, it takes a long time for most people yeah. to get there. I mean, you could argue this kind of Freudian thing, which Ernest Becker uh, argues is they it's they they actually figured it out early on, and the terror they felt was like the reason it's been suppressed. Mm. And the, the reason most people, when I ask them about whether they're afraid of death, they basically say no. <laughs> they basically say like, um, I'm afraid I won't get like submit the paper before I die. <laughs> like they kind of see, they see death as a kind of uh, inconvenient deadline for a particular set of like a book yeah. you're writing. Yeah. It's as opposed to like, what the hell this thing ends. It's like, at any moment, like most people as I've encountered do not meditate on the idea that like right now you could die. Like right now, like it, it, it's like it, in, in the next five minutes, it could be all over and, you know, meditate on that idea. Um, I think that somehow brings you closer to like the core of the motivations and the core of the human Cognition. I think it might condition. be at the core, but like I said, it is not what there's drives so many us stuff day on to top day. Of it. <laughs> yeah, there's so many things on top of it. But it is interesting. I mean, as the ancient poet said, uh, death whispers at my ear, live for I come. So it's it is certainly motivating when we think about that. Okay, I've got some deadline. I don't know exactly what it is, but I better make stuff yeah. happen. It is motivating, but I don't think uh I mean, I know for just speaking for me personally, I that's not what motivates me day to day. It's yeah. instead, oh, I want to get this, you know, program up and running before this, or I want to make sure my co-author isn't mad at me because I haven't gotten this in, or I don't want to miss this grant deadline, or you know, whatever the thing is. Yeah, it's too it's too distant in a sense. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, it, it is good to reconnect. But for the AI systems, none of that is there. Uh, like a neural network does not fear its mortality, uh, and that that seems to be somehow fundamentally missing the point. It's a, I think that's missing the point, but I wonder, it's an interesting speculation about whether you can build an AI system that is much closer to being a human without the mortality and survival piece, but just the thing of relevance, just I care oh. about this versus that. Right now, if you have a robot roll into the room, it, it's going to be frozen because it doesn't have any reason to go there versus there. It doesn't have any particular set of things about this is how I should navigate my next move because I want something. Yeah, there's a, that's the thing about humans uh, is they seem to generate goals. They're like, you said live wired. I mean, it, it's very flexible in terms of the goals and creative in terms of the goals we generate when we enter a room. <laughs> you show up to a party without a goal usually, <laughs> and then well, you figure it out along yes, the way. Yes, but this goes back to the question about free will, which is when I walk into the party, if you rewound it 10,000 times, would I go and talk to that couple over there versus that person? Like, I might do this exact same thing every time because I've got some goal stack and I think, okay, well, at this party, I really want to meet these kind of people or I feel awkward or I whatever, you know, whatever my goals are. 